Bap, bap, bap. Oh, hi, John Stamos on the show today. John Stamos is here. And just is John Stamos in love with me? Everyone's in love with me. <laughs> No, impossible. I feel like I he did text me and he was like, that was maybe my favorite interview. So he's gone on a couple other podcasts. Ignore those. Actually unsubscribe from them. And <laughs> sorry, that's such a funny directive to be like, guys, like, subscribe. Also unsubscribe from bad friends. Unsubscribe. That would be that's such a funny. You guys. Yeah. Can, we can resubscribe later. I just think it would be funny if Bobby Lee and Santino woke up one day and just had like half a million less. <laughs> subs we can do it again. I just can you guys help me out on this prank? Anyway, why am I talking about them? Those hoes do not belong in this intro. Um, so John Stamos is here. He's amazing. He's hilarious. Super interesting conversation. Lots of hot gossip, actually. Uh, before we get to Stamos, uh, just FYI, if you want to come see me live, please do. You know that I just live for your approval. Uh, June 28th, I'm going to be in Erie, Pennsylvania at the Warner Theater. I'm going to be in Las Vegas, July 6, 2024. That's Fourth of July weekend. Let's celebrate the birth of America and the fact that I didn't die in childbirth. I'm going to be in Edmonton, Canada, Alberta, Canada, the Great Outdoors Comedy Festival. That's July 17th with Burt Kreischer. Also, I have a new stand-up special out. So I did a, a special on Netflix um, uh, about a year ago called Jokes. This is one that I couldn't do on Netflix because I yell about trans people and say all kinds of things I'm not supposed to say. So we did it with OF.TV slash Whitney. That's OnlyFans TV section. So you know we can get away with pretty much anything. But don't worry, there you're not going to get an invoice from LegalZoom from your ex-wife saying that you're losing custody of your kids because you're on OnlyFans. You're not on OnlyFans. There's a subscription side, and then there is the TV side. OF.TV slash Whitney, and it's free. Special's called Mouthy. Enjoy. Here's John Stamos, who just gets hotter as he gets older. I can't Sweet. deal with you being as good looking. I mean, what? that will save for the thing. I want to Please. Um, like, let's go. Are we rolling? We have our first clip. Already. Are we rolling? First clip. Yeah. Why? And today is the day that we reveal the father of my child Seriously, live on me? the podcast. <laughs> is it me? What's happening over there? Sorry, I'm just trying to get. Is that is it un is that uncomfortable? Do no, you it's, switch? So, it's so comfortable. Hi, just, Whitney. How are you? Now, how many shows have you done? How many episodes of this? Two hundred and. 15 and this is the first time i've been on i've asked you before no, also you if you want to do this we'll do this what i will go through our text go right ahead now. i'll go through our text you asked me and then you canceled then you wanted me to do something with those two funny ladies i do have you canceled. two photo or two photos of you that's <laughs> it my screensaver um i do have two numbers for you i don't think it, it, nobody cares no i think everybody cares let's just go through all of our talk text about messages. you I'm i think i was so hmm I'm so excited about you that you're pregnant. Thank now, you. Now you sent me a video. Do you remember? And it was so. It was sort of out of the. Oh, we have to talk about that weird doctor we went to. Do. You look like a movie. You look like what? like Sophia Loren or something. What or, is this? What is? I'm happening? not kidding. I had. Let's talk about when we first met. <laughs> you love this story. <laughs> What's the story? You love this story. The Bob Saget roast. Yeah, you came into the room and they, they said. I was a writer. This was my first. Well, no, I had written on the Flavor Flav roast the year before. <laughs> yeah. And then I was a writer on the Bob Saget roast. Yeah, and they said, come in and meet Stamos, right? Yeah. And I thought. Which, by the way, you're the first person they ever invited me to come in and like pitch to the celebrity. Really? So I was already like very nervous. You yeah. were? You walked in. I go, oh my God, who is that? You you look like the hot Muppet on in the band. You know that girl? <laughs> because I did have bangs. She had bangs. And I was like. <laughs> really thick <"Shh."> bangs. <laughs> I was like, she can't be funny. She's so hot. And then you were the pop. You were even you were as funny as hot as as you were hot. Well, thank you. And That's now you're nice. so successful. And um, that was a real that roast was maybe my favorite ever. It was a good one, huh? My favorite ever. What do you remember what jokes you wrote for me? There were a couple oh, really good. Oh gosh, I don't. I will, I do, I think. I remember just killing myself on that roast, writing a lot of really good jokes, yeah. and then just being leveled by Norm Set being the funniest <laughs> I've ever heard. Norm McDonald <laughs> right. did corny jokes on purpose. Right. 
And remember during the taping, I mean, what you saw in the final cut was like five minutes. That went on for like 18 minutes. Yes. <laughs> and we were we were the only ones laughing, I think. Oh, well, Bob was, he's dead now, so I won't say he was dying because that happened another he, time. It's all but right. he was crying laughing. And the most, I, I've never felt more joy than watching Bob wipe tears right. from his eyes with Norm yeah. going, you're not over the hill, not in the car you drive. <laughs> just the dumbest jokes. Nobody got it in the audience. They were, And it just kept going. And then we all started laughing on stage. Then you guys... Uh, it, that was the best roast. You know why? Because f first of all, it, it had you. Uh, second of all, it um, people were they actually were all, friends. They were friends. They were all Bob's friends. It wasn't like randos coming up there doing you know. Because Bob actually had friends. Did you know Bob from uh, when we did the special? Did you know him before? I knew Bob from the, obviously just from being a fan and stand up. I mm -hmm. saw him. He would come to the comedy store every now and then. Sometimes he would come to the improv. And yes. then uh, when I worked with Jeff Ross on the Flavor Flav roast, I think we like hung out a couple times. I remember mm. the first time I hang out with Bob, he made me, of course, laugh harder than I've ever laughed. And it's not even a good joke. I almost yeah. like don't even want to tell this story, Bob, because it makes it seem like you're a hacky comic, but some he could do the dumbest shit uh, yeah. and make it so funny. And mm. we were, this is how long ago it was because of the device I'm about to reference, we were at the Palm or the, what's the one that has all the actors headshots? Palm. palm. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, like right as soon as dinner's over, everyone gets on their phone and everyone just kind of does yeah. like this. And he had ordered a, like a Sunday with fruit or some shit on it. And he grabbed a Blackberry and he's oh, like, yeah. I have to send some emails for my Blackberry. Yeah. And he, <laughs> <laughs> no one really noticed it. Yeah. Like, cause we were all, and then we look over and he's <laughs> he committed going. to the bit so yeah. hard. <laughs> right. that it's like all mushed up in his hand. Yeah. And it's just like, he's covered in Blackberry. And it was God, just was like, just the, I was, I like had to go for a walk. I was <laughs> laughing so hard. He, he, I think that was Dave's joke, by the way, Kuye. Hmm. Um, but, Bob, Bob's dead, so we could say. Yeah, Bob committed if we to it harder, maybe. If we don't talk about him, I know he, he'll complain. Um, I got to say, he really yeah. also made me... Um, he loved at a time, too. whenever I am like, oh, is it, you can't joke about this, or we shouldn't, or when like the internet gets to me or whatever, I mm -hmm. remember we were, there's nothing you can't joke. There's just nothing you With cannot him? No. joke about. No. In general, we were at the Bowery once having dinner, and mm -hmm. I ordered this lasagna <laughs> thing, mm -hmm. And right as I was about to take a bite of it, he just went, hey, don't eat my sister. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, too soon. His sister had a Scler skin disease yeah. that was just, and I remember just like, like, that's Bob. That's Bob. That's how he got through it, you know, and, and, and the rest of us maybe had a different and technique. And find your people. If you can't laugh at the same yeah, shit, yeah, these yeah, aren't your just, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm he, sure other people would have been horrified, but that's right. like, oh, we're just yeah, family. Yeah. We vibrate like this. Totally. He, uh, I asked him to, to host my dad's funeral and he got up and said, tonight's specials are cake and cock and we're out of cake. And <laughs> my mom was like, <gasps> and then he was doing like, you know, circumcision, calamari jokes. He's a Jew and all stuff. And it, but it, we needed it at that moment. He's a guy, look, we didn't like each other in the beginning very much. We, that we you talk about that in the book a little bit. That's fascinating. I didn't know how to, the two hardest chapters turned out to be the full house stuff because I know how much it means to people. And I, I just, I had a love hate relationship with it. And, mm. and Bob and I had a hate, hate relationship with each other at the, at the, um, at Bob's funeral, yeah, you were there, we were getting out of the car, remember to go over to the, the actual, um, casket and everything. And I just and remember worrying Chappelle and John Mayer were going to drop that casket. Oh yeah. This is when Chappelle uh, wasn't in great shape. No, I was carrying it too. And I had a foot problem. Dave had something. And as I get out of the car, uh, Sherry, his his uh, his first wife, comes running up to me. She was hugging me. She goes, "Bob loved you so much. He also hated you. He was so <laughs> jealous of you." You know. So, and you know, when our three sisters, so his sister got scleroderma, and he spent the rest of his life. As, uh, you know, we've been to a lot of his events, um, trying to find a you know, raise money for a cure. Dave's sister had this terrible cancer, and then my sister got a brain tumor. Tumor, right? And it was the three of us. Then all of a sudden, we're not just you know, castmates. We were brothers grieving our sisters. And that's what really brought me and Bob together. We were like, okay, enough of this bull. Let's put our petty aside and let's uh, learn from each other. I, I, it took me a while to say that what a genius he was, but it did. Now- But was he also, by the way, on the show, also doing funniest videos simultaneously? Yeah, and that was, was good he? because when, once he got that, it was like, okay, you, you, you're doing that show. And, and he felt better about himself. He wasn't as jealous of me and we weren't- I think it's know, like really along. hard to understand when someone's that successful and that funny that they could be insecure. Oh, well, yeah. You right. know, and this is like a big thing of reading your book. I was like, oh, you can look like you and be as successful as you. And like, right. 
feel insecure. That's like mind blowing. Yeah, I wanted to focus in on some of the relatable stuff like that versus, you know, play with the Beach Boys, a million people. Yeah. But yeah. Bob Bob was the most insecure, right? Uh, wh what killed me, and maybe you can relate to this, is like the amount of love that poured out for people, for, uh, from, for him. Like I've, I haven't seen that since Princess Diana or something, and I'm not even, and he didn't know it. Because you couldn't say, Bob, you're great, or Bob, you're talented, because he wasn't. He, he didn't have seven Netflix specials and yeah. he wasn't playing, you know, the form or whatever it is. In his mind, he was never quite successful or or funny. And it's interesting because it's like, I also see a lot of people that didn't accomplish half of what Bob accomplished and aren't mm -hmm. half as funny as him, but mm -hmm. they think they're like the shit. You know, I think comics, yeah. it's either, you know, it's like sort of like arrogant, super narcissistic, mediocre people are really great people who think that they suck. And I yeah. think part of that is part of like what drives us, you know? Is that too intense? Very hot. <laughs> oh, it's hot or it's, it's, right. it's bad? Great. It's great. No, it's great. I don't know how to make coffee. I don't even understand what the draw is about it. Yeah. I don't even think it's that good. Why are you drinking I, it? Because I think I'm supposed to. Why do you look so great? I don't, what do you, why do you? <laughs> I'm telling you, I've always had a crush on you. I remember being at Warner, I remember the room we were in. I remember you walking in, Ray James, I think Ray was James, there. Ray James, yep. And the director, what's his name? Uh, Joel crazy. Joel Gallen. Yeah, Joel, yeah. yeah. I just crazy with Joel. Name. Joel, who would, love you, Joel, who would um, yeah, grade, you, Joel, but... grade the jokes <laughs> with a check or a check plus. Mm. And so we would just watch him read the jokes, which jokes are meant to be delivered. So we like, can we like deliver yeah. them yeah. for you? He would just sit there and do check, check plus, check. Mm. I remember it being very, like I came back, like Bob asked me to host it. I was like, oh, okay. And then when I saw some of the jokes, I can't, you can't say that, I can't say this, baby, right? Yeah. And I, I said most of them. And then at the end of the night, I was so happy because it was really fun. The and then when I saw it, I, I, when it, I freaked out. I what? called Bob, I called Joe. Well, I think a lot of, when I was shooting it, I was clapping back at all the, all the comics. There was some great jokes. I think you wrote, let me think, did you write? Um, I actually uh, looked for the documents of it and I had just switched computers, so I'd have to like dig them up. I was hoping well, to have them today. There's iCloud. Yeah. Mm, I know, I can't, my no, nudes got leaked. Know. We can't do the cloud anymore. You did it really? My, oh, right, right. And you just uh -huh. said, you went straight on and said, here they are, mother that was great. Yeah, I had a, well, it was like, I had accidentally uploaded a photo of my boob uh -huh. and then whatever, took it down and then. How did I, you accidentally upload a picture? <laughs> upload like, it to where? I don't know if you've taken oh, California yeah. edibles. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah, you're high. First and last time. Okay. And what happened? You and, Well, I had like uploaded it by accident. Like I was just being an idiot in the bathtub and like uh, my boob was out. Who cares? And then I took it down. Someone had screen grabbed it the day before a special came out and said, I think $18,000 or I'm going to oh, sell wow. this to a tabloid, right. whatever. And so I just posted it. So was that, couldn't. but that, but you were, you actually put it on Twitter or something? Or yeah, I put it on like Twitter and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. It was also, it was like, I wasn't gonna like press chart. It was, I was probably just a kid, right, you know what right. I mean? It was probably some, I don't know. I thought you were so Croatian beautiful boy. and so funny at that thing. I had some, I, did you write the joke where, um, uh, John Stamos walks into a, oh no, that was Gilbert. But, but, <laughs> but I don't know if, Gilbert, yeah. if you guys wrote it. John Stamos walks into a bar and the bartender <laughs> says, uh, hey, we have a drink named after you. And John Stamos says, you have a drink named Secret Fag? <laughs> I don't like saying that word, by the way. And I had a lot of. Um, hmm. Can we beep it around? Why? Well, I'm not a comic it was like said you. Back then, yes, it was. You're yeah. quoting a comic. I love comics. I love the science of it. I love the the math of it. The way you guys, you know, set up jokes and stuff. And I think you would have been study. a comic if you weren't so handsome. No, I I don't think I could. I can't remember all those words. Well, I think because I've like been uh, listening to you obsessively on other yeah. podcasts because I never want to ask questions that you've already been asked because okay. I feel like you so you don't have to just like be a broken record. Um, but the, I was so blown away by like that bullying story oh, of right, the guy right. that punched you in the car and yeah. like that's the moment a comedian is made right because right, that's right. when you're like I got to use jokes to fight back I got to use jokes to survive. Did you have thing. well in my case. And I remember I got punched by this bully because his girlfriend wanted to go out with me. And it was the beginning of, it was really interesting to write about because it was the beginning of, of, it was the first time that a girl, I heard that a pretty girl liked me. Like I was a, the caterpillar, like turning into the butterflies halfway yeah, maybe or something. And I was like, wow, she, wow. And I told everybody. Uh, and, and I was at this block party and um, I was at the dorky hat party. And then down at the end of the block where was this, this girl's boyfriend who was a jock. And he heard about it because I told everybody. And, he, and I was in the car, knock on the window, and I, oh, hey, I rolled up. Bam! <gasps> Have you ever been hit? I'd never been hit. And it was shocking. And I was like, oh my God. And there was 
there was no no talk of bullying back then mm-hmm. or counselors or anything. No, and that was so, just recess. Yeah, right. Where did you grow up again? Uh, D.C., Virginia. Right. My last name is Cummings, so I had my fair share of of that of of bullying. bullying. Yeah. Um, and so I, my every I said I have to do something. I walked into the bathroom and he wrote, uh, "I'm going to kill you, big nose." And I thought I have to do something. I have to do something drastic right mm-hmm. now. I have to become famous. And that's what, that's what, that's what propelled me. That <laughs> is every plateau. Do you, have you had that? Fascinating. Literally fascinating. Yeah. Every time I got on, I, I did got that on TV. With, I had, it was one moment. My yeah. dad was watching Rodney Dangerfield on mm. TV. He would watch SNL and I couldn't get his attention. And I remember going, I need to get in the box. <laughs> I need to get, how and old that was it. That was your Six, first lesbian experience? <laughs> <laughs> did she say that? Um, is your dad still around? No. Mom? No. Were they proud of you? Uh, no. Okay. I think I know some of the Maybe story. they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and I think they were. They probably didn't know how to show it, but they were in their own sort of So the bullying thing. And I and I really came to, to terms with, um, you know what, now I'm successful. I'm going to write a book. And, yep. you know, I wanted to dedicate the book to him. They said, no. But I did. I figured he, I, he probably can't read. So <laughs> if, I hope he's listening. I had to change his name. But um, It's I, amazing how like a, just one moment like that right, can risk, change yes. the entire course of but your it life. it ate me up, man. And it hurt so bad for so long. And I finally, I think, writing this book, I finally let go of a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. not just not just him. So if I saw him, I'd be, you know, hey, man, You probably I should send him an it. edible arrangement. Yeah, I should send him something, a, a tires percentage or something. percentage of your fortune. And that's what I would tell him. Say, hey, man. Some tires. <laughs> white wall, maybe white walls. Um, I would say, thank you, man. Because of you, I've, 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 you know, it propelled me to get where I wanted to go and no hard feelings and God bless and goodbye. Does he know it was you? But. Like, is he? Like a phantom limb <laughs> lost in the war. I still would. I said, oh, by the way, uh, I dated, you know, that your girlfriend for three years and she said you were hung like a finch. So, f- you, f- <laughs> you think I'm still bitter? I'm not. Yeah. Oh, hung like a seahorse. I hated it, mother. I mean, you know. It's by the way, I had a lot of like, like making fun of my last name, and I think that's part of what made me like quick mm-hmm. and have to defend myself. Yeah, but myself. you were beautiful, and you still are. Oh, so, what, how did you get around that? I mean, what was that about? But I, because as an said, adult, five years ago, was really roughly bullied by someone in our business. I'll tell you who it was. And it threw <laughs> Molly Kimmel. Molly Kimmel. <laughs> You were? And and it threw me for years. And I just now kind of got over it. Did you, have you confronted this person? Nope. It was like, it, I, I was like, I'm not going to come forward. I'm not going to snitch on this was person. Was it Kelly from Kelly and Regis? <laughs> no. Was it Ryan? It Seacrest? wasn't Ryan. Was it a guy or a girl? Uh, a girl. You had to think about it. Huh? A girl. Is she on The Housewives? <laughs> no. Is she? Because <laughs> I like a bitchy, tough ass woman. Caitlyn Jenner. It's not Caitlyn right. Jenner. Okay. It's a- <laughs> I love you. She's like, you stole my face. Wait, did I finish prison thing? Well, you create these shows that were successful. You go on Roseanne, remember that, that whole controversy, but you held, you you were graceful through that whole thing. Mm. Um, and now here you are. Your last special was great. I texted you a couple of times. I was watching it with my wife. We loved it. Thank you. And uh, now you're pregnant. No one believes me. I think I also talked very publicly about freezing my eggs, like in a, mm. a special, like a couple of years ago. So everyone thinks I like f- a Tesla or like, no, everyone's like, is this from a human man? Like <laughs> it's this very odd thing. You didn't. I don't know. I'm very excited. What am I in for? Oh my God. I'm so happy for you. Because uh, you know the, what? My other name was Billy. I'm so excited for you. It's mm-hmm. the greatest thing ever. And I, I sw- my whole life, I wanted to be married and have a kid. Mm. And I didn't think I was going to get there. You know, the Indiana Jones, like uh, with the walls coming down and he's, and yeah. he's and he, people shooting darts at him. <laughs> Probably the same with you. And he grabbed the, 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 the whip and slides under it and the wall goes down just in nick of time. That's mm. me with the uh, wife and kid and you with the kid. But don't you feel like I'm glad that I waited till I was, cu- <sighs> if I had done this a two years sooner. 100%. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> There's no way I could have been a great, great father like, you know, before I sobered up like whatever, eight, nine years ago. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it ta- it's, it's, it's. I've always wanted kids. I've been around kids forever. Um, mm. It's so much harder than, to be a good parent, yeah. it's so much harder than I thought, but it's the most rewarding, beautiful thing. Is there some weird thing where you kind of get to redo your childhood a little bit too? I go to Disneyland? Like, or, no, you do that anyway on a daily basis, which is so funny. I was listening to you on Chelsea. I, I, here's, a, here's what I love about Disneyland. Okay, I know you're Disneyland head. I have two of my best friends on the show Once Upon a Time, that ABC show. Yeah. 
play Snow White and Prince Charming. So right. when we go to Disneyland, it's like they're the Beatles. Right. You know what I mean? Like they it's, dress up like what, what it's what's that? They're just they, they dress up like those. No, they're just everybody something? knows them. It's like this whole thing. But we get to do like the tours and yeah. stuff. And one of the tour guides told me, yes. number one, at night, they let out 100 cats mm -hmm. that go kill all the rats. Right. Mm -hmm. And you've never heard of a problem at Disneyland. No. There was like the uh, Exit Through the Gift Shop documentary where Banksy had put in like a Guantanamo <clears throat> Bay prisoner on one of them. Yes, yes, right. But you never hear about shit going. There's a prison underneath. Mm -hmm. There's like a whole thing. Mm -hmm. And then they have plain clothes cops in case like weirdos without mm -hmm. kids are just walking around. And if you like True. really watch... You'll see someone just one man walk up to another man and be like, hey, bud, we're gonna go for a little walk. Oh, yeah, yeah. They did that with Michael Jackson, I think. Did uh, they? When, <laughs> Michael Jackson would, because I, I grew up right by Disneyland and, you know, my friends, all my friends that I've known forever have worked there forever. And they said he would, one of the gags was that he would get into this, uh, one of the trash boxes, uh, ice cream boxes, okay? And they okay. took all the ice cream out and there was a little hole and he had a walkie talkie. And I, okay, that, that kid over there, so I'm gonna take this. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. You think I'm gonna get in trouble for saying you that? You would get it's like a, a like the like the well, you know, ice he, cream truck. No, it was like a, a, a like case, a rolling like a rolling thing case, of, yeah. and he'd be in there. He'd be in there with the snow cones, with the, eating the snow cones. <laughs> and um, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, Just, if you talk. Do you think he? We don't have to get into this, I, but I mean, he you know. literally. I mean, this is my. He also abused animals, so you know, I'm oh, like in the exotic yeah, animal yeah. trade. He had right, elephants right, and giraffes. Right. Yeah. He built a zoo to get kids to come. Right. Oh, he didn't have sex with the animals. It was I a mean, lure. They, uh, People get mad, but you know he was whatever. I, I, I'm not gonna did you know cover. him? I didn't know him, but he called me once, um, and he said, "Hey, John, this is Michael Jackson." I was on um, I was on ER, and I played it for everybody. He said, "I really dig your." St he wanted. I bought the sign out in front of Disneyland, and he wanted it too, and it was on an auction, and um, he he wanted that. So he said, "I really dig your stuff," or whatever that means, and he said, "Let's go to Disneyland someday." And then I, I remember hanging up going, I'm never going to like, And I was playing it for all the people on ER. And stuff. <laughs> but wait, he tried, to, but you get, have the sign. Yes. You have it. Mm -hmm. How much was how much was that? No, it wasn't wasn't much. It was um it was right when eBay first started mm. and, and Disney thought, oh, let's get rid of a bunch of this shit. And it's the original whole sign from Harbor Boulevard. Ooh, there's and, also, by the way, YouTube channels of former Disney princesses talking about all the rules. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to talk. They're not allowed to chew gum. They're not allowed to eat. Like all the stuff in character. Like they mm -hmm. get these like really serious like makeup lessons. Like I'm yeah. just obsessed with that. So shit. cool, right? It's there's so a, cool. there's a sign I have uh, at my house that it's like good show and bad show. And the good show is like how you're supposed to wear your sideburns and your nails and everything. Bad show is like bad long sideburns. It's from the from the 70s or something like that. We were shooting at Disney World with Full House, and the they were shooting a scene. Uh, it was hot, you know, it was Orlando, and uh, mm. the twin. somebody kept messing up their lines, and there was a character- One of the twins, clearly. No, it, <laughs> they own Disney World now. <laughs> I went to Disney World with them once. The, um, so the character, by the way, didn't you get me a coffee? Was that my coffee? No, I was making coffee, and I was like, do you want one? And you said no, and so I just started drinking it. I said yes. What, what kind of and coffee you said do you want? Well, it's too late now. No, I'll go get you I'm one. Too do you want to tell anyway, the story, no, and no. then I'll go- I'll, I'll I'll go, go Should I just take over? No, no, I'm- Is that okay? I'm really- don't don't. No, we're getting okay. you a coffee. Yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm You're gonna John you coffee. Stamos. I am, but it's it's uh. Even if it's just psychological, right. do you want some of mine? You might not like it. I put I put hot honey in mine. No, thank you, Patrick. Thank now, you, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Now we can just talk about leaves. Pat. Right? <laughs> Oh, what's with the Pat? Fucking Pat. Fucking Pat. Um, I have never cared what entrance of my house people come into mm -hmm. until Stamos came in the side door. Well, you spend, you you do a whole thing in the, it's well, a, it's a presentation. Well, I put all the on the side so that you don't see it. And then I spend all this time like making the house look nice. And then he comes in the side with all the I didn't see that part. I didn't see it stuff. So we're doing a scene. I wasn't in it. And there's thousands of people, for, you know, at Disney World watching us do the scene, watching yeah. them do the scene. And there's a time limit for these characters with the heads and the thing because it's very hot. Yeah. And the the uh, minder who was with the person going, mm, one more minute. And, uh, Joel Zwick. Did you know Joel Zwick? I know that name. He's a dude, famous sitcom director. director? He, yep. he looked like a little crab. Like, ah, ah! <laughs> and said, why need a one more? Okay. <laughs> and they did it again. They screwed up. Why one more? And they're like, they're way over the time. Ah, 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 ah. And the character, I can't remember what it was like, Boom, and passed out. Now, instead of, they can't take the head off in front of 5,000 people watching, so they drag the poor person backstage, like by their arms, like. What mascot was it? Off. I can't remember, but that's uh, that's how it's, but they're very, you know. It's, but the, you, the inside those things is hot. apparently incredibly hot. Yeah. And super inhumane for them to be in there. Right. Have you ever, there is a moment though, when you've gone to Disneyland as a kid and there's a magic to it, and mm -hmm. when you get to the age where 
you know the princess is just a Hooters girl. <laughs> and you see like the human. Under, yeah. You see the glue of the wig. Mm -hmm. You see Madeira or whoever trying to do that. The Irish accent. <laughs> and you're like, that's not Irish. But if I, the kids are enthralled, right. but we all kind of feel bad for you. No, I know. Uh, the magic is always there for me. You see the Invisalign nope, I don't on Jasmine. I don't want to see No, it. No, I don't want to believe it. <laughs> you're not well, like, weren't you my hostess at Katana last <laughs> night? Wait a minute. Like, <laughs> I didn't sleep with you. And then my wife, I was done with Disney about six, seven years ago. I was like, I've done it. I was enough. With it. Yeah. And, and I thought it was sort of hurting my career, like not giving me legitimacy because I was this Disney adult. Known as a Disney adult? Yeah. And then, I, and then I went to dinner with Kimmel and I brought Rickles and he brought Brian Gosling. And Brian was like, I love Disney. And I'm so, I'm, you love Disney too. I love it. I go there and I play. And I said, okay, he, if it's okay if, with Brian. Yeah, you know. It's punk rock. But, um, but what happened? Like, would you go to Universal Studios? Yes. I went to Universal Studios in Florida, dude. It was like being on crack. Why? It, it was is just, wow. Yeah, well, what they do is they've got like all of the cards, like you have like a magnetic thing mm -hmm. and you, it's just a very well-oiled machine. You put your shit in the locker and you get on the thing and it's all like super 3D. Like it's like being in a video game. It's like being in a simulation. Yeah. That's pretty cool there. We were just there. I, I and there's there no with kids the, really. It's not kids. There's some, you know, I played there with the Beach Boys a couple of times at, at the Universal. We were, I was just there. But um, I'm a Disney guy. I'm going to be there the first week of December when you have your little child. Mm. So, But also, aren't Disney movies kind of traumatic for kids? I remember Bambi and all these movies being yeah. very upsetting. Yeah. What was your first success? Was it was it the roast? I think it was. The... I think it was being on the Joan Rivers roast. That was the first time I got to be a roast. Was she your? Was she hero? Super, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Were, pretty much. Did you do? The, there's a documentary. Oh, you were in the documentary. The documentary, right? uh -huh. Geraldo, like the roast was in it, but uh -huh. Geraldo is, I think, the one that they featured. Oh, yeah. I, know, yeah. I mean, the jokes that I said about her were like rough, 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 rough. In, and for her? Yeah, like I literally said, she, my first joke for Joan was, Joan, I loved you in The Wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> like, it had just come out. Did she, did she it's laugh? like, Joan's pussy is so old, it has a separate entrance for black cocks. Oh. And she had just gotten so much work done. You know, she got all this Botox. And yeah. you know, I mean, I don't have to tell you, everyone starts laughing based on how much the person being roasted is laughing. So they would look to her, but yeah. she kind of like, her Could, face she was- She couldn't laugh. So she would be like, I'm laughing. She had to yeah. subtitle, <laughs> subtitle her face. She'd be like, where's yeah, it's fine. It was so tight when she sat down, her mouth opened. Yeah. And, ah, and you think she was laughing. Do you remember Cloris Leachman on there? Yes. On the wooden, I remember we were trying to get a wooden dildo built because she wanted to have like a wooden dildo. With she like a, was the best, the right? Best. She had the greatest. Do you remember she said, uh, she said, I'm not here to, to roast Bob Saget. I'm here to fuck John yeah, Stamos. That's right. <laughs> and I went up and gave her a kiss. And, she was like, and then like a couple weeks later, it, I, ha I had a birthday. It was my birthday. And she shows up about midnight, one o'clock. And wet hair, like she just got out of the shower and she was so fucking funny. Dad was saying with us and was saying happy birthday. I have pictures of her like flipping my mom off. And Animal. God, she was great. Animal. Just animal. Yeah. Yeah. I love like throwing in women like that. Like one of my favorite jokes ever was uh, on the Shatner roast mm. when- um, Betty White. Uh, Betty White. Uh, what's his name? Alexander, uh, Jason Alexander. Yeah introduces Betty White and mm. Betty White just goes, thank you everyone, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, Jason Alexander. You know, Jason, they make 2% milk now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. What like, was it? Someone had a joke about uh, uh, some, uh, Betty White, someone shat in her pants. Oh God. Shatner. All right, y'all, here's the thing. I have a child coming, uh, but I'm in a nightmare because I want to put photos of said vampire. I want to put them around the house. You know, and I didn't know how. I what am I going to Kinkos? What are we doing? I don't even know. I, I'm like we're printing photos. I'm texting them to my printer. I'm trying to figure out how to get them out. It's a mess. Okay. Remember when? I mean, look, we used to take a roll of film and give it to some guy and leave it there for like a week, and they'd be like, "Come back between eleven and two next month." You're like, "Huh? What?" You'd like have to park at the mall and like go to a kiosk to get like, am I going to a kiosk to get, I guess I have no photos of this kid. I guess this kid is going to just be a ghost. But even if I do find a frame by some miracle <laughs> and print a photo by a second miracle, I can't decide which photo I want. It's like, you know, when you see like a frame photo and you're like this one again, <laughs> like that was just there yesterday. <laughs> like, like, ah. Uh. And then if you want to change it, you have to go in to the there's like those little things and you got to pull it out and you've got it's just like it's, I can't believe we were doing that for so long okay 
Thank God for the Skylight digital picture frame. The Skylight frame is a frame that has any photos you want in it. And all you have to do is email that photo from your photo library straight to the frame at any time. It's genius. I'm so mad I didn't think of this product. (laughs) Instead of looking back through a camera roll, you can display photos of the family in real time so that your family's not looking at your phone and seeing those other folders no one should be seeing. This is the best thing to give any new parent. It will give them constant joy because they can't, you can't pick just one photo. You know, when someone's like, look at my baby and they have to show you 50 photos of the same baby at the same, with the same hat and the same, but to them it's different. I'm going to be that person too. That's just what happens. So that's why I have one of these so that when other people take pictures of my kid, when they come over, they can just email the photo right to the frame. So I don't have to give my friends my number. (laughs) You know, they're like, I'll text you this picture. I'm like, I know what you're doing. (laughs) So this is genius. All you do is email the photo right to this frame. Okay, we're not starting a shared folder. We're not. There's no Dropbox. There's no zip file involved. Never again. Skylight is a touchscreen photo frame that you can send photos to straight from your phone and they appear in seconds. You can even preload photos before the box is opened. So when it's unwrapped and plugged in, your most treasured memories will appear. Ugh, you're going to win Christmas with this thing. It is the perfect gift for everyone. Look at this. So easy to use. Setup takes literally less than 60 seconds. We did it right here. The touchscreen makes it easy. Swipe through the photos. Tap to see new photos sent. Tap the heart if you want to say thank you. They've got black, white, silver, limited edition poppy. It's like an orangey red and gold frames. This is so much better than social media. It's a great private way to share photos without posting it to the world, especially for parents who don't always want photos of their children everywhere. There's a couple of us out there. Satisfaction is guaranteed. We're confident that you'll love Skylight. We offer free 120 day returns as a special limited time offer for our listeners. Get $15 off your purchase of a skylight frame. When you go to skylightframe.com slash Whitney, get $15 off your purchase of a skylight frame, skylightframe.com slash Whitney. That's skylight S K Y L I G H T F R A M E dot com slash Whitney. Funlove.com is a leading online retailer of sexual health and wellness products, offering the widest selection of premier brands of toys, lingerie, and accessories. They have everything from soft and sexy to hot and spicy to deep and juicy. I added that. I added those two. Don't blame the brand. That was me. (laughs) Sorry if that was a bummer. Go indulge and find unforgettable presents and gifts for people on your list at funlove.com. Discover the allure of intrigue, intimate products, a collection of premier his, hers, and couples toys exclusively available at funlove.com. You can't find them anywhere else besides my bedside drawer, but you can't buy those. I will never sell them. (laughs) They live with me now. The collection of intrigue has something to satisfy every person and desire. Each toy has sleek and playful design elements and multiple features and functions. Browse a wide variety of vibrators, beads, bullets, rabbits, G-spot toys, dildos, massages, body wands and bondage kits and find whatever tickles you fancy. Intrigue intimate products are only available at funlove.com. For a limited time, receive 50% off Funlove's exclusive Intrigue collection when you enter code good for you at funlove.com. Again, enter code good for you, all one word, receive 50%. That's half off Intrigue at funlove.com. You know, and Bob, this is very sad. I don't know if you want to, but about a year before he died, there was some jackass kid who got a hold of stuff, put it out of context, and did this whole thing about Bob and sex with it, also like just terrible shit. It's, it's and he, so but dumb. no, but it, 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 and then it went super viral. Like, on it TikTok. was like something like they're too old for me, or before they were. I had texted them before they were famous. Bob's it's joke. It's a brilliant joke. Yeah, there was a lot of those jokes, or he would just talk about. You know, uh, um, uh, someone was just telling us that he, I think it was Santino was talking about that he was doing a stand up and talking about having sex with a man. But this guy, this kid put this thing together and it, and it all of a sudden it blew up on TikTok. And you, he raped the Olsen twins, blah, blah, blah. And it killed him, obviously. He got it taken, mostly taken down. The lawyers got in there and stuff. But it, it just, and we, but Dave and I were getting getting it too. And how mm. could you be friends with him? Now, the Olsen twins showed up at his funeral, as you saw. Yeah, and of course. They were so beautiful. I, you know, we hadn't seen him in a while, the rest of the cast, and they came up and said, you know, 
we love you and you made our childhood great. We love being on the show with you. They said all the things that we were like, I'm the one that gave you the Benadryl. Yeah, was it when you were a baby? <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Uh, That's why you guys stayed so short, but okay. <laughs> Do you know them? Even? I don't know them personally, yeah. no, but I have given them a lot of my money for their fashion line. And good stuff. They have really good taste. Uh, we, Big the, fan. One of the nights of Bob Singh's thing, uh, Chappelle and Jeff Ross and Dave- Back at the, at, and, yeah. At the store, right? Yeah, well, there was that, but then we also went back to the guy's house that night. Remember after the memorial? Jeff Franklin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that uh, Chappelle and-, and But right, one of Chappelle my favorite moments actually was one of his daughters talking about- um. Which, I, I mean, one of my favorite things about Bob, like obviously the funniest, but whenever I'd hang out with him, he would just tell me how proud he was of his daughters and what they were doing and what they were up to. Yeah. And like, no one saw like, that side. He never know? left anything on the table. I bet you look at your last text from him and it's, I love you, I care about you. It, it'll so much. make me, it'll yeah, kill me. Right, right. It'll kill me because it's you... actually me not, him asking me to do his podcast and me not responding. <laughs> Did you ever do it? I never got to do it because it was during the pandemic and we were doing all these fundraisers together. Remember yeah, when we were some... doing all these like fundraisers? I don't know where all the money went. I don't think it went anywhere. You're talking about the, the scleroderma stuff? No, like we were just doing it like fun fundraising for like waitresses at the comedy store. Uh, oh, like during the, during comedy the, gives yeah. back. Like we were just right. like doing all these like pandemic fundraisers. Mm -hmm. And I would always make fun of him because I feel like he would always do the Zoom fundraiser in the shittiest room of his house. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? He'd, yeah. he'd like go down to the garage and like yeah. look poor in the like, video yeah, or something. On, I'm yeah. like, why are we pretending this? is your house but like what room is this and um but he uh uh i just loved hearing this from his daughter which i don't know how his daughters were so composed uh, at the memorial because it was like three days later but um one of them was talking about how in public whenever he would like see like another man he would say to her like i mean like what if like he was your dad <laughs> it's just like a funny it's such a funny thing to like troll your daughter about to be like you know he could be your dad <laughs> like that guy was your dad <laughs> he works so hard at the end you know he had, one of his daughters was is dealing with some mental uh, some health issues and you know I think he he had COVID and he, I think he went out too soon and he you know that wasn't great for him yeah and he was you know it was a lot of money and he and he felt underwater, and he just had to work. But he was also at his peak. You, you remember the last uh, post that he did? He was like, um, "I feel like I'm 20 again." And he, yeah. he was on stage for two hours. Yeah. And I, I just like I sort of thought about him just driving home, and he he called his wife Kelly, who he loved so much, and Kelly great... at the funeral, going, "So Bob still doesn't know what I do for a living." <laughs> 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 did you? Well, you didn't show up. I think you had COVID, but we did this thing at the comedy store. Yeah, that one I was Mike not Binder to. produced it and stuff, and and. Um, but uh, Kelly was walking up, and Jim Carrey goes, "Keep it short." <laughs> That's the thing. So, so he, but he, what was I talking about? The, uh, the he was at the top of his game, and, I, and then started touring. And he called Kelly and said, uh, "I want to post this picture, and can you, can you, you know, can you face tune it and make me look more handsome?" And she said, "You don't need it, Bob. You look so handsome." And then, I mean, this is just in my mind. And then he goes to the to the um, the hotel, and he lays down, and he and he. He's dreaming about the next time he sees all of us, me and you and his daughters and our little kids and family. And then, and he's and he's got this smile on his face because he just just slayed an audience for two hours and and he just goes to bed with that thought that he that he just did this incredible two hours and made a lot of people laugh, a lot of people happy, and then gone. It just never ended with him either. It was like it just he couldn't. He had to make everyone. I mean, even walking down the hallway, you just mm -hmm. had to make everyone laugh all the he time. He was addicted. I to was it. worried about. I was always like, "Are you exhausted? Like, yeah, aren't he you?" He was exhausted, yeah, and that was the problem on the show too, because he wasn't getting a lot of laughs as the character. And Dave and I f quickly found that we could be funny together. And I quickly saw that the, the Jesse and Michelle is it was going to be a big thing. So he wasn't part of any of that. So. And he was like a drug addict for laughs. That's you right. See, that's you see right. these people. Yep, yep. He had comedy Tourette's. It's like Tourette's. Yep. And he couldn't. He it was too much, and it was disruptive for me because he all because he wasn't getting the laughs on the show. So he was trying to make the crew laugh all the time. You know, I said, "Put that in the show, man." And he was the only guy who had hit two daughters at the time, and then three. And but he was a genius. And, and uh, just to see the reaction when he passed away, we went to the we had this great the four of us had this great dinner at Nobu, and it was the last time I saw him. And and we did the cake cock jokes and you know, all this stuff and. It was like we've been losing a lot of people. It yeah. was like a national heartbreak. Yeah, right. It was like a national heartbreak. Because it was also, even though he was like such a goofy, oh, silly oh, ass oh. goose, like mm -hmm. though I remember like the episode where 
can't um dj had like an exercise disorder <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, right, stop right. working out or whatever and like when he would sit her down on the bed like i didn't have a dad like oh, raising me you know wow, like wow. those little talks like meant a oh, lot really? to me yeah wow that's so interesting. that like the, the, like people really um yeah that meant a lot to a lot of people that's beautiful i it took me jeff franklin was over a couple of weeks ago and he's writing a book and he asked me he said when did you finally come to terms with full house because I, I you know it took me a long time i said not until i wrote this book i don't know about when you wrote i'm fine but like did you did you just stop you discover your story as you're writing it right <laughs> Mine no. was like, I think a little bit different. Like, I, you know, I don't think I was as self-aware when I wrote my book. I mm. kind of was like, okay, here's all the like stories and stuff that I'm too embarrassed to tell on stage. All the like material I've been trying to figure out how to make funny, but uh -huh. I just don't know how. And I'm just going to basically tell all my secrets. I had just gotten into a 12-step program. How long ago was it? Um, That was uh, five, six years ago. Oh, really? I, I, I worked I, my ass off, I, revealed yeah. everything. And then it came out. I've been hair and makeup about to go on the Today Show. And uh -huh. it was the day of the Vegas shooting. Oh, God, the book yeah. came out. Yeah. So. It was like, okay. I, I'm going to go back the, and, and I'm was, the victim in that scenario. <laughs> yeah. It was really hard on me. So it's just kind of like, it's just like having a book come out, you know. I mean, yours oh has gone so smoothly, like so. I lucked out though, because right when I finished all the press there, well, first of all, you know, it was, we couldn't book the shows because everybody was on strike. We didn't know if that was, yeah, then they went right, back right. and then, you know, nobody could promote their movies, but this is different. So yeah. that worked. And then the, there was that, there was a, that shooting in, in, um, in Maine, yeah. right at the end of the thing. And, um, but you do pour your, like, it's been really weird. Like, but I, I didn't want to do that. how deeply you went. Like, it's sort of like, I mean, I'm in a 12 step program also, like to be mm. able to just like, like expunge all this shit from like all, like we're only as sick as the secrets we keep. And I feel yes. like we carry around our own secrets, other people's secrets, like writing a book, you just get to like get it out. But I didn't want to at first. I didn't, I didn't want to write a book period. I didn't think I was smart enough. I didn't think I could do it. I, I just didn't have it. I thought, I'm not going to talk about who I f***ed and that's all anybody cares about, which is bullshit. That's not mm. true. And so I kept saying, no, no, no. Then I was a dad at 55. Okay, that's interesting. And then Bob died. Mm. And they said they saw this, um, they read the uh, thing I did for the LA Times. The, these I agents said, Bob, yeah. you're a good writer. And I said, I don't remember even writing that. Well, why don't you write it? By, they brought an offer. I said, no, I'm not. And then I had these beautiful notes from my mother. But I didn't want to be so honest. And I set out, I was like, I'm going to write a hero story. I did this and I did that. And I was like, ah, this is sh you know? And I got, I st they said, well, the publisher said, you got to write about your ex-wife, Rebecca. And I said, no, I don't. I said, it's, you know, it's part of your story. So I finally, I wrote that early on and I wrote about being in rehab and, and doing through the 12 steps. And mm -hmm. the four, fourth step was, you know, write all your resentments down. Yeah. I had that sponsor. And he said, write every, you know, make a call and write. And I said, she did this to me and she did that. She did blah, 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 blah. And he said, are you done? I said, no. I said, another paper. Give me another pen. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. He said, okay, good. Uh, now, in the next column, write what part you played in all that. I go, I didn't, I didn't. He goes, even if it was 1%, just, yeah. just write it down. And I start writing and writing. I said, oh, fuck, man. I had a lot, as much to do with, mm -hmm. the, with the demise of our relationship than, than I, than as her and that I thought. Which is like the miracle of the program because like at first you're like, wait a second, like I, I now I have to feel bad or I have to feel guilty or someone harm me. But it's like the freedom that comes with going like, oh, I can own that part. Yeah. And then this, the shame dis dissipates, but it's also like, Same. then you have a modicum of control. So it's yeah. like, oh, if I had a part in that, that means I don't have to repeat that again. That doesn't have right. to happen to me again. Like and, I get to change right. instead of like I'm a victim. I think a lot of people want to be a victim, but this yeah. amazing thing happens when you go like, oh no, that was my fault. There's yes. something so freeing about it. Yes, and you think it's not going to be freeing. You think I got to keep this too. I can't, yeah. I can't admit it. Oh, you didn't even, you can't even feel that you did. But then mm -hmm. when you open it up and I came across this line that I wrote. I'm so relieved when something's my fault. Yeah, me too. I'm like, and oh God, I love to say, fault. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I am so, I, now yes. I get to own this, but now yeah. I don't feel like I'm being bullied by the world anymore and that I'm not in control and I'm this victim, oh, no. you know? Because otherwise it's it's like, I mean, my program is like, I'm perfect and everybody has hurt me and I'm, you know? But then you're kind of like, oh no, I stayed too long. Like you can always find a fucking way yes. that you had a part. Right. I stayed too long. I tried to it's... fix the person. I, yeah. I tried to, you know, get my internal needs met externally. I tried too hard to make something work. I tried to control the person. Like there's always going to be something. That's right. I lied to myself, whatever it is. For sure. It's a, that deep, dark secret mirror that you look into. I came across this line and then I, that I stayed with that the whole time, which was uh, anything less than the truth is paralysis. Mm. Isn't that a good one? I don't know where it came from and I just wrote it. And then I, then, then I went back and sort of told the truth about a lot of it. Um, and then it was hard because I don't, I don't, I'm a, 
pleaser too, right? I want everybody to be yeah. happy with me and everybody to love me and stuff. Which and, is the number one way to not please anyone because nothing's more <laughs> annoying than a people pleaser. Yeah. Just are you okay? Are you fine? Are you fine? Is right, everybody yeah, happy? Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. ugh, the most annoying energy. Yeah. And I, yes, I try to, you know, work that. But um, I, uh, when the, uh, like, I think it was on a Wednesday, like they started picking all the, the salacious stuff out. And I, and I caught my, uh, I was madly in love with this gal named Terry Copley and I cut her in bed with the, the Tony Tan song. Yeah. Was yeah. that who it is? Wasn't it? Yeah. Was that it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the only reason why I put that in there was because the, 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 um, the end of the story was that, <laughs> Full House came out the first season and didn't do well. And at the very end, they said, we're going to, we're probably going to cancel you, but we're going to try one thing in the summer. We're going to put you on one of our, after one of our hit shows, summer reruns. And if you get an audience, then we'll think about picking you up. And the show was, who's the boss? Mm -hmm. So I was like, mm, okay, but, 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 right? But, um, why but not? I'm so done keeping everybody secret. I know, but it, you know, yes. And, and, and I really didn't take it. If you wanted me out. to write better about you, you should have behaved better. Well, that was it. One but on I, one. I went to bed crying one night. I was like, oh, that's people, you know, he was upset, I guess. And I thought, Thought that my I thought Rebecca had have you said seen the video something. of him roller skating into a pole in New York City? No, okay. into a what? He roller skates into a pole in New York City. Remember when Tony Danza had a talk show for a minute? I was on it. <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> well, I love it. I was shocked that he had me on there because of this, you know, this thing that happened a few years yeah, earlier. He was like, if I get him on, I'll never write about this in a book. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure he, whatever. But I felt bad about that, and then I thought Rebecca had said something, and I, I felt bad about that. Turns out she didn't. It was the husband said some. Something innocuous, not, nothing bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I just went, I just felt so crappy. And you, over the years, you probably dealt with it because you guys, with the roasts and with your comedy, you make fun of people. And yeah. You, have you had people call you out on or call you up and go, why you did you say this? You know what was the roughest, actually? And I recently, um, and you're talking about it right now. Like, you're mm -hmm. already repairing. You're already going, like, I maybe shouldn't have done that. Or maybe I shouldn't have written about that. Or maybe I should, whatever. No, I didn't say that. The right. <laughs> well, but not, I, always, I was the, fine writing it, but I felt, anyway. The roast of David Hasselhoff. Pam Anderson yeah. was on it. And right. Pam Anderson had had her own roast. Yeah, I saw that. She was, that was the, in the throne, right? Right. So now she's just on the hassle. What did one. Gilbert do? What did they say? Don't. It was right after 9 11, one of those? Um, <laughs> was it? And they're like, Gilbert, don't say 9 11. No, don't do. Yeah. Well, there's always like rules in each roast, right? Not so many. For, <laughs> I mean, for shit. Pam Anderson and Tommy Lee, it was the, the kid that drowned in right. the pool. And Shatner was the woman that drowned in the pool. Wow. And Someone's always drowned in something. His drowned. wife, didn't his wife yes, drown right. in a pool? And then Joan Rivers was Melissa, her daughter. Hmm. Um, uh, David Hasselhoff, Hulk Hogan's daughter was off limits. Um, well, and then maybe Hasselhoff. So what was daughter. the thing with Hasselhoff? And then Trump was literally nothing. Um, oh God! Yeah. So this was on Hasselhoff Rose. Pam Anderson's there. This is my second roast. I, they're paying me $5,000. She's getting... Five hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, this is Pam Anderson, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know, like people sometimes drop out the day of, the day before. Artie, I think. On ours, remember? What's that? Artie Lang, remember? <gasps> Artie. Okay, that was Saget's roast. So yeah. we had written all these jokes about Artie Lang. Yes, there were fat jokes. The day and before, drug jokes. Yep. he's attempts suicide, can't make it. We have all these jokes. Mm -hmm. And we're just like, what? We just need a fat. Person. We scrambled for fat. We go for like <laughs> Louis Anderson. We're My. called Patrice O'Neill. Yeah. And then, and then we get Jeff Garland. Yeah. Who's not? He's literally <laughs> lost a hundred and fifty. Yeah. It's like, why did you lose so much weight? What? Right. No. Every joke is like. Yeah. Literally, look at that beanbag chair over there. Yeah. Oh no, that's Jeff, Jeff Garland. <laughs> I feel we, like it was. We switched that to Jeff Ross. I had some great jokes about Artie too. Damn it. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I sidetracked. No, I know. Like, David people will always like fall in, fall out. I mean, Mike Tyson was on it, falls out. So by the time we shoot it, like I have five pages of Pam Anderson jokes, but like a bunch of people had pop like popped out. Mm. And uh, I went pretty hard. I mean, I literally said, um, uh, Pam Anderson, you've dated Tommy Lee, Kid Rock, and Brett Michaels. Why don't you just save yourself some time and drink a vat of Magic Johnson's blood? <laughs> 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 like it was like, it was like that. It was like you had I remember AIDS. that joke. Who said? Did you say that? Joke? I said that. Yeah. yeah when was yeah. the what was the first one you were on? Because I don't think Joan you, Rivers. Okay, and how, was that the first one I wrote on? Was Flavor Flav. Flavor Flav. Then Bob. Because they hired me because I sent in a whole packet and they wanted to use one of my jokes. Which they was? always said they'll never hire a female writer. They have the same five guys. Yeah, it's never yeah. gonna happen. I wrote like sixteen pages of jokes for Flavor Flav, and I wrote the joke, Flav, you look like what Magic Johnson but, should look like right now. Oh, so they brought me in for the week so they could use that, and then I had to like fight tooth and nail to kind of like stay in the. In the ring. And then you became the, the, the King Chili Cheese over there. Mm -hmm. So, but wait, so with Joan Rivers. Uh, oh, so, so Pam Anderson, so she's, 
I'm going pretty hard mm. at her. And then she's, I can tell she's upset. She gets up, she leaves, like comes that back. That was a Hasselhoff one? Hasselhoff her, one. Okay. Yeah. Because hers was, I think that was. Also. But she had Tommy brutal. there and she was like kind of, I don't know, in a different headspace. Like before right. the show, she was like, you know, my kids are going to watch this. And I'm like, bitch, I, I, yeah, what am I, yeah. this is, I don't know what to tell you, man. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I'm here to win. I have $40,000 worth of loans. I have no credit. Like this is. Were these, high, were, were these and college? I recently group? apologized okay. to her. Okay, good. Um, and I like. Wait until you become shoulder. a mother. See how much guilt you have then. Mm. This show is brought to you by Dreamland Baby, maker of the famous Dream Weighted Sleep Sack. I'm holding it up. It's a game changer. So you know I'm fully pregnant at the moment. And I've had most of my friends tell me that the key to getting babies to actually sleep is this weighted sleep sack. The ones who didn't recommend it, in all fairness, recommended whiskey on the gum. So let's just ignore the people that didn't recommend it. I've used a weighted blankets for myself to fall asleep. So it makes total sense that a stressed out little tot would do well with this soft AF lightly weighted sleep sack that makes them feel like they're right back in the womb because my womb is probably this exact blue color <laughs> and quilted, frankly. Grab a Dreamland Baby weighted sleep sack to get deeper sleep for you and your baby. The product is genius. It is so genius. You've seen it on Shark Tank, folks. It's easy to use. It has a two-way zipper for fuss-free diaper changes and cover comp technology. Evenly distributed weight from the shoulders to the toes. Look at that. Dreamland Baby sleep sack. You're going to save so much time the, the, by not having to you know, cajole them and sound machines and all that time that you save, you can use to cry in your car and try to figure out how to, you know, cut their tiny little nails and you can wash the poop off everything you care about and furiously check TikTok for parenting advice and for pediatricians who will respond to a DM in under four hours. You're going to have so much time freed up if you go to Dreamland Baby Co. Dot com. Enter my code Whitney at checkout and receive 20% off site-wide and free shipping. This offer is for new and existing customers. I'm telling you, Dreamland Baby Sleep Sack. Total game changer. Go to dreamlandbabyco.com. My code Whitney at checkout, 20% off. Can't say it enough. Do it. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. This is the time of year you need to get some therapy. Why? Because everybody else won't. I promise you, your parents will not be doing therapy this December and working out their character defects before you go home for the holidays. I promise you, they are not studying the nuance of the Israel-Palestine-Hamas situation. I promise. They will say something insane about it. I promise you that they will make a backhanded compliment about your appearance and ask why you don't have kids yet. Or if you do have kids, they'll say something to the child that will destroy the child's self-esteem for life. I am willing to bet money that I am right about this. We cannot force our family members to go to therapy, but if we go, we can at least have some tools to be able to either shut up or as they call it in therapy, set boundaries, or you can tell them to go F themselves. Or as I learned in therapy, have the dignity of their own experience. I've learned so much in therapy about how to protect myself around the holidays to not feel guilt and pressure to go to every holiday thing. It's a, an amazing tool is when you tell, tell someone ahead of time, a therapist told me this, that you can say, I can come by from one to three, like give them a window ahead of time so you don't go at one and then start packing up at 245. And they're like, you're leaving? You just got here. And then they try to guilt you into staying to watch them get drunker and drunker and handsier and handsier great tool that I got from therapy. So you should try it too. It's just full of tools. Put some more tools in your toolbox this holiday season. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule, as they say in London town. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Whitney today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Whitney. Who do you feel like should have been a bigger comic? Giannis Papas. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't mean that. That's not funny. I mean I mean that in the, in the way like, why isn't he more successful? 
And um, I, t- I talk about that. He should be playing. By the way, he's one of the funniest people on the planet. Him. He's one of the funniest. He said he, he would. He stayed with you a couple of times here. He had. Uh, he said, "How was it?" I said, "Well, he, they're, they're dog fights." Yes. And he's dating. So she's dating some guy, and uh, he didn't. You know, he got in the middle of a dog fight. He's so then he came to my house. Remember, me. and he did. I don't think he wanted to leave my house to come back he here. He is literally one of the funniest people on the planet. Are we calling him? I'm trying to call him. I love him so much. Wait. We're just curious. John would like to know. Why you're not more famous? I would like to know why he's in, naked. He's literally <laughs> who are you, Bert Kreischer? Why you, why is your why don't you have a shirt on? From now on, I will be shirtless. Okay. Greek bird. That's the. <laughs> that's bird. why you you need a gimmick. You go out with your testicles just hanging out, just the balls. Giannis is my favorite. You know, I, I I stumbled upon him on on Instagram. I think and he was doing jokes about me, but they were nice because we're <laughs> Greek. And did, is that what happened? I DM'd you or something. That's correct. Yeah, that's exactly. What did you? Because you call yourself retarded, John Stamos. Yeah, it was special needs. It's very- <laughs> <laughs> but then he was saying the nicest stuff about me, and then we we connected. The first time we saw each other, I think in person, you were staying here at Whitney's. What what room did he stay in? Should we go look at? <laughs> he was right next to her. Yeah, I said he saved my life. He broke up a pit bull fight. All right. Yeah. He was I the only thing that was available was a kennel. I was sleeping with dogs. <laughs> the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> There that like I don't even think she knows is there. I, met, I she, meet people. I go there and I'm like, hey, I'm like, you know, Whitney. They're like, no, we just heard that she just lets you live here. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't live here. She was. There's just people uh, in my house yeah. I've never met. <laughs> well, I, I think he was, uh, and then you were came to my house and you're like, please let me stay here. I don't want to go back to Whitney's. <laughs> We did have some amazing Greek food. Remember? Do you remember the name of that restaurant in Tarzana? There's a, an amazing Greek place co-signed by Giannis Papas. Yeah, it was really good. That was a fun night. And um, was, uh, yeah, I don't remember the name of it, though. But Have you I, ever I, seen Giannis watch football? I've never watched football. Oh, watching him watch football is what, is what <laughs> most people watching football feels like. Like what? It's yeah. very fun to watch. I love John Stamos. America loves Jan Stamos. Everyone needs to get this book right away. Well, but I also it. said, this is the biggest compliment. It's like, Seven. how is Giannis not the biggest oh, comedian of all time? 100% uh, a compliment. And I, I ask everybody because it's like, when is it going to be his turn? I just want it from insiders like mm-hmm. you. And they all say he's very close. Very close. And he's just got to get he's funny. Our the only problem is, is, is he's not funny. So the when he gets that, <laughs> I want to see Giannis get his next big step. And he will soon because we love him. He's so funny. The funniest. Are you masturbating? What are you doing? Like, wait, show us yeah. your hands. Do you, is this He's, how you sleep on your side? Yeah, I sleep on my slide. With your uh, blankies? <laughs> with my blank <laughs> and, <laughs> and my sexy, you know, uh, milk piece. That's not Invisalign. It's just like a just, sleep apnea thing? Yeah, it pulls your jaw forward so you don't snore. <laughs> <laughs> but is the idea what's wrong with snoring it's just your wife will leave you and no well yeah and i i have sleep apnea but medium not extreme so hey well, look at have you why see look how beautiful whitney is look just show him she looks the, actually she looks incredible you look incredible she looks like angelina jolie you know what I'm the best and you. worst thing i ever did was dye my hair blue because yeah, was, having blue was, and purple and orange up hair and I look like Courtney Love for a while and mm-hmm. now people are like you look amazing I just set the bar so low for myself no you've always been hot but you look you look like a woman like a back brown it's almost yeah. like God knew what matched my face you've always been hot you weren't into the like full-on meth Me? head <laughs> No, but you're, Green hair. you're you've grown into a woman now, a be- like a beautiful woman. Excuse us. I'm not wrong. <laughs> Excuse us. I'm not kissing your ass because well, it you, took you know. You probably do need someone to take care of that kid, so hopefully. <laughs> I'd be good. I'm good. Uh, you see me on on the TV show. Yeah. At the end, Michelle, don't eat that lizard. There, you know whatever it may be. What? <laughs> you have. You have friends who take care of your dogs when you're away. Who's going to take care of the kid when you are away? Miss Pat most. is taking the child. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. We love you. Love you. Uh, love you too. Wrong number. What is it with Greek people? I, I've never met a Greek person I don't get along with. Really? That I don't like. Rita Wilson? Do you know Rita? Are you guys friends? <laughs> what? I'm not, I'm not being funny. She's one of my best friends. Oh, I thought you were going to say like, like I'm like, I get along with all Greek people. You have Jennifer Rita Anderson, Wilson? Yeah. yeah, Jen Aniston, Alex uh-huh. Demopoulos. I have a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. Hannah Stocking. A lot of my friends are Ooh. Greek. Oh, Hannah good. Stocking, she's a big influencer. Um, Alex Demopoulos, chef um, and comedian. Galifianakis, do you know? Ja- exactly. I don't. I've never met a Greek person that I don't like. 
That's good. What's that? Great. What's the ancestral trauma? None. Salad. No. The salads kind of suck. Ass. <laughs> oh yeah. Is that what it is? That's why. That was big back then. What do you mean back then? Darn it. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, back when. I've never In been the to Greece. ancient Greece. Oh, you haven't? No? I was there this summer. It was so great. Yeah, Mykonos. I no, I didn't go there. Uh, we uh, Athens. You have to go to Athens first, and then there's this island that Rita has a place there. Nia was there. Okay. All the famous Greeks. And um, Jim Giannopoulos. Do you know Jim? From, I don't. Uh, right uh, and they've been asking me to go for the longest time. So we went for my birthday and it was really great. Oh, fun. Th this leads into, I, I, I've i had all these great mentors over, over, and now you're, I'm sure you're mentoring these young comics coming up and stuff, right? No? I tr I do the best I can. Here's do they the not like? What are they I like? do. Yeah the best I can, but I also go, look, the way, what I did to make it, that path no longer exists. Right. So, so they need mentors. You might need to just become a TikTok star or make a sex well, tape or get yeah. on a reality show. I don't know because I did it like, hard. God, yeah, yes, yeah, I sure. went on Leno and then I worked really hard to get five minutes for Montreal and then I built, right. th those days are over. Right. So I don't know, maybe you need to be but, live but, but, streaming your butthole on YouTube. I just am not sure. But you're like the, the grand dame of, of you're not old, but I mean, like, me like no, no, no. Well, you're pregnant. Mm. Uh, remember, we did the um, Bob and I flew in to do some New Year's Eve TV what show. Was uh, uh, what was that? What was that? Was it Rock and Eve or something? No, 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 no. It was a game show or something. Oh, uh, I think I know with, with Annie Cohen. Yes. Yes. And uh, yeah. yeah, and you were sitting next to me, brawless. I was like, uh, what are you what, <laughs> Sorry. What are you doing? I was like, I, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting erect. <laughs> I think I was newly sober. I was like, stop. <laughs> um, but you are the like, the, but you're like the 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 boss of, of you know, like, who created, you created two shows, you created your show and then and then two two drunk girls, two girls. And a, <laughs> two drunk girls, the two Wendy Cummings, Cummings Chelsea thing. Handler story. <laughs> how about that? <laughs> it is, what, how about it? How many years did that go? That went for almost seven years, yeah. You must be rich as fuck. No, my family has made sure that I am dirt poor. Your, your family's dead. Yeah. Well, what? Are, what but are they the, stayed alive for a really long time. They, in very expensive nursing they, homes really? and ICUs with no health insurance. No. Which Where is do kind they of live? Like, the they were in um, uh, uh, Georgia, and my mom actually moved out here to Encino. Did she live with you? No, she was in a nursing home close by. But it's you know caretakers and, and in and out of ICUs, the whole thing. But I think on some level, like like making money, spending it all on my family, the codependence of it all kept uh -huh. me in a state of needing to work. And I think uh -huh. that that was probably a good thing for me. Like yeah. I, I still have to work for money. Where are you at now? What do you, what, what's your next move? You've next conquered move, everything. Next move, special come out in two weeks. Okay. And then um, just did those two rows. I think we're going to do more rows. What's, so you did the, loop you into it. The Bert and who else? For uh, me. Oh. There's the roast But did me. they air already? Yes. Yes. On uh, OnlyFans uh, TV. What the fuck is, is that? OnlyFans. <laughs> OnlyFans, like uh, OnlyFans is like, there's no nudity. I know what Only OnlyFans TV is okay. just like free streaming service. It's like is cooking it working? shows. And yeah, it's working and they're actually doing uncensored comedy. They're doing comedy like comics that are like, for lack of a better word, like middle class comics that mm. are doing, remember like Evening at the Improv and stuff like that. Where yeah. like not, if but in order to get a Netflix special, you have to be famous. You have to be Tom Segura. You have to be Burt Kreischer, whatever. But, but there's all these amazing famous. comics that right. used to be able to get famous off of doing The Tonight Show or Letterman or whatever or Live at Gotham. Comedy mm -hmm. Central's kind of gone. So it's right. like they have nowhere to go except their own TikTok or Instagram. But how are you going to amplify? So they're able to do their sets on here. They're doing these amazing like specials. I did two roasts on there. And then I'm doing their first stand-up special. Oh, that's and great. And then totally. I mean, did I you shoot it already? Shot it a uh, month ago. Is it great? It's great. Do you edit? Do you have? I mean, by now, you you know you call the shots, with, right? Do you, what 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 um? Do you are you helping young comics like your boy Rodney did? Yeah, take them on the road. You do know you? what? Dangerfields was actually up for lease. What's that mean? Oh, the, the, the comedy the, club in New York. Where is? Oh, in New York. Yeah. Did you get it? No, I thought about it. Like, a lot of TV shows. Like, oh. Where's your? Well, it's also Rogan kind of opened this comedy. He did open this comedy. Are club. you friends? Are you guys yeah, close? Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I've never met him. I, I'm a fan. Oh, you I mean, love him. You guys for, get along. For him to do what he's done, you get along. in this in this scene. What a great thing, huh? You and uh, he's also your comedy nerd. He loves a comedy yeah. nerd. Yeah. Like for like for real. Did you make records? Did you ever know records? I went Don? to his. I mean, just giant fan. I went to his toast. Remember? Did you in go New to York? that in New York? The Don Bob and I were toast. For the the Friars thing. That was at the Friars. Yeah, and it was I remember because Joan Rivers. Yeah, right. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah, yeah. I she was there. But the idea is, it wasn't a roast; it was a toast. Yeah, sure. And everyone was just kind of being nice. His I, daughter does stand up. Yeah, Mindy. Yeah, I've gone to see her. I was, was standing in line. I was getting ready to go on stage, and De Niro was 
in front of me or back of me. And, and we'd gone to um, Iraq together. <laughs> And for some reason, they stuck me like with- the USO thing? Yeah, it was usually- Oh, wow. No, we went to fight. I don't- <laughs> <laughs> Went to the sandals, I yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the sandals, all inclusive in, in Iraq. That was, maybe that was why it didn't work out with Rebecca. I should not have honeymooned there. That was beautiful. Was that the Waldorf or something? That's exactly, it's somewhere in New York. I just mm -hmm. remember because I was sitting next to Katy Perry. I guess there was like the weird, like, I don't know. I was at some weird table, mm -hmm. Katy Perry, and I had gotten my nails done right. for this, which I never do. And I got them gray with like a little neon green as the tip, which is like kind of a crazy choice, whatever. And I'm sitting next to Katy Perry, who's lovely, by the way. Mm -hmm. She wasn't, I don't think she was trying to be rude. Well, she's got, she shoots fireworks yeah, out of her boobies. Shoots, what, yeah, she shoots, yeah, her cupcake tits. Yeah. And she goes, oh, I love your nails. And I was like, thank you. And she went, Ikea colors. <laughs> I was like, bait. <laughs> I was like, Schmuck bait. She real Don didn't know he was the king of it. You know, I mean this from my heart. You're going nowhere, or whatever. You're, you know, schmuck mm -hmm. bait. And I think I heard Sarah, maybe you or Sarah mm -hmm. Silverman use the term. And I remember I used to tell him, man, you're the king of schmuck bait. What's that? <laughs> what, what you do all day long? I don't do that. <laughs> schmuck bait. Do you know I that term? Yes, but also, I also, I'm, I lied to you. I think actually Rickles did the Quentin Tarantino Friars Club roast that didn't air. And that's mm -hmm. the first roast I ever, ever did. Were you just do you were on it? I was just on it as a performer. How many did you do then after? I did well, I did as a performer that one after I had written on a couple ones, and mm. then I did three. I did Trump, Joan Rivers, and uh, David Hasselhoff, I and then I took a little break. Did you ever get to the Hasselhoff thing that, that we were talking about that you that he got upset about? Oh, it was well, Pam. It was got Pam upset. Anderson. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hasselhoff was like great. I mean, Trump was actually the wildest because Trump, after destroying him for like 18 minutes, mm -hmm. I came off and I just went, hey, I'm so, you know, you like Apollo, you're kind of yeah. like, sorry. I went, yeah. And he went, that was great television. Oh, wow. What about the pilot that you didn't hire me for? Uh, remember this one? I, I really wanted this pilot. It was the great- This HBO pilot? It was the greatest fucking script I, I, I've ever read it pilot wise. And it's, all, and it's, I wanted it so bad. I know, which remember? Side, this is the one I, with and Lee I Daniels. Call, who? Lee Daniels. Yeah. It was the one about the college campus. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you, and hired, what's his name from, um, uh, from Talk Soup, Greg Kinnear. And how was that? I love that that's the credit you give him. <laughs> I'm sure he's, no, I don't have anything to say. No, that. I just wrote um, like an animated movie. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm kind of like, now that the strike is over and I just like was worried about TV. I feel like TV was in a weird place. I feel like the two best things I've ever written didn't mm -hmm. end up going. I did this one thing in HBO and this mm -hmm. other thing that was about the, like basically human resources department at a college campus. It was me too. Office. Like it was, you really it was three generations of women trying to figure out, yeah. like girls are like, he assaulted me. And right. Lisa Kudrow's like, that's just a date. I was kind of in the middle and the young girl was like, he has to be, can't, you know, it was like right. us all, you know, uh, yeah. and trying to navigate all this new like woke stuff on a college campus and um, didn't go at Amazon, which by the way, I don't know. It's weird. Like we're doing shows for grocery stores now. I mean, it's Amazon. I don't know. I'm getting notes from a grocery store. I did. <laughs> I did one for Amazon too. I had this, I, I had this show at, at Netflix that, that, um, and I always, did you ever watch California Cation? Obsessed. Tom Campanos. Yes. Guy, right, right. Genius. So I went after him to do the show and we're doing it, but um, it's the, it's like- I, I'm tech avail. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's four guys <laughs> like your show, but it's like, they, they, no offense, but they are overdeveloped for women out there. Yes, it's true. There. And and it was just like this, it was like a male, it's it's like a male Big Little Lies. That's awesome. And it's about, um, have you been to Hidden Hills where I, where I live? I have yeah. slept outside your house many times. Oh, that's right, that was you. <laughs> I looked around when we moved in there and I go, it's so beautiful, shiny streets, mm -hmm. and everything's perfect. And there's a there's a lawn, and there's a horse, and there's a yeah. thing. I go, there's some bullshit going on, 100%. and I'm gonna find out what it is. And I did, and so that's what that shit. Like is. desperate house husbandsy. Yeah, but a little more Tom Camp. You know, well, because it is also all of these guys like you that have seen it all, done it all, and are mm -hmm. now settled down, and like God knows what skeletons are gonna like pop out of the closet. Right, the bigger the closet. Yeah. The more the skeletons. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you're so you did yeah, do you feel like you need to write it? Oh, you wrote an animation. I do voices, by the way, in case. Oh, yeah. If you listen to my do. audio, it's uh, this uh, I've been um doing Lisa a lot. Frank. Which that, one? That IP. It's ah, Lisa Frank. Probably, like, like it this was on every folder oh, like, yeah. growing up, like when I was in mm -hmm. like school. I don't think I'm the uh, I don't It's like a big I'm, piece of I'm IP. I'm not a colorful tiger guy. Yeah, but you could be like a What's that, like a horse, a penguin or a Wow, oh, I'm a penguin. You could like, be like the Greek uh, chicken. Hi, I'm a Greek chicken. Bye I don't know, like a <laughs> fuck me in the ass. Huh? <laughs> what are what are there enemy animals in Greece? What you could be like a sardine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
I love that idea. That's genius. Well, oh yeah. Well, but well, I get, I get a little bit it. like paralysis because it's like, it's almost like choosing a husband or like a wife. It's like, because if I do this show, I'll be doing this for eight years. If you're so lucky. The idea, I get, yeah, I know. When was those the last show that went eight years, right? I know. I mean, you're probably Big Bang Theory. Yeah. That One of those. Are oh, you friends the with Simpsons, Kaylee? Simpsons, all those. Yeah, but those are, that was started that was a while ago. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. It's probably and, like, and also they do thirteen episodes, it's right? So and then, true, it's and then so you have true. the rest of the thing. Don't be afraid. I know. I you should that we should do a show together. Let's do it. We should do the odd couple on broad uh, uh, yes. not Broadway, but like dinner theater kind of like travel yes, with please. it. I feel like the best Have you the, done th th something like that? Dinner theater? No th well, any theater, a play, a musical. Not a ton. Did you do your audio book? Gosh, I did my audio book and I was reading it like as if I hadn't have written it. It was so hard. Like, it's so hard. It is so hard to read your own audio because I'm also like trying to change things as I go. I it's did. So, uh, so I had enough time. That's exactly what happened with me. Ugh. And I'm reading it. For, and you're reading, you're cold reading your life, right? Yeah, and you're like, like oh, that could be funnier. Loud. And then I'm like, I'm being corny. And then I'm like, I need to delete this. I re just repeated the same word. Like, yeah, I just, like you but guys that's the good thing about it. You guys it. didn't catch this typo. Like I was just yeah. so in my head. And then a friend of mine was like, you just need to take an Adderall and get in there and do it. <laughs> Blast I it. take an Adderall. I can't even speak. I'm like cleaning the thing. I'm like, I'm like, you guys, can we just move the the composer stand? Like, I can't focus on doing it. Uh, so then I had to cancel it. My my mouth started getting all dry, cottony dry. Yeah. yeah, I just was like a mess. I did. They, they said, oh, it'll take about five days. I took thirty seven days. <laughs> you know what it is? It's I'm like kidding. it's like in um when you're in a 12 step meeting and they pass you something to read and yeah. you all of a sudden just can't read. That's how I was. I was like, <laughs> after an hour or so, I'd be like, to, to hate, to hate. what's this word, T-H-E? <laughs> uh, uh, like, you're like, go, dear go God, we, yeah. we gather uh, to, sit. and you're just like, this well, is, that, yeah. it's just like, and they're just sitting there. But I did it and it took a long time to do it. And, I, and in fact, I said that I was gonna, I said, I'll pay for the extra days because I wanted to get it right. Cause I, that's all I do is listen to audiobooks. And I do voices and you know, it's, you do. Uh, You're... it's, um, it's, um, it's so weird. It's so surreal that hmm. this, and, and, and you to have like a, I, just, I never wanted, I never, I, it wasn't my thing. I just, I, but those are always the best books. Anyone's so. that like, it was like, I'm so interesting. I need to write a book. It's oh, usually yeah. the insecure people that have the most interesting to say. No. And, it and got, it's the perfect time. Yeah, I guess so. Well, now that I'm 80. To do it. I love you. Thank you for having me. And Jessica. thank you for being such a, like, you've always been such a like light in this business. Like there's so many just like creepy weirdos and spooky corners and you've always just been like such a bright, like shiny, sparkly light. And anytime I see you in a situation, I'm always scared and socially awkward wherever we are. And I'm always like, stay most, like my yeah. safe place. Yeah, I'll, I'll always be your safe place. You're the best. You just are. don't have your birthday on my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Moving you, forward. It was like su super, it was a, it was a 60, sexy 60. Yeah, that's it. It was a costume thing. But yeah. then it turned into super sexy, super spreader. So, uh, 20, 30 people got uh, COVID. No. Yeah. A lot of your friends were there too. I know. But I know. Um, it's good that you didn't go because people got sick. Mm, and I was prego. And yeah. was. I lost a baby during this interview. <laughs> that, yeah. Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> Let's go. You. Thank you, everybody. Love you. Love you too. Don't kill elephants. If you <laughs> what is it about elephants? Don't, don't dry hump elephants. elephants. Don't dry hump elephants. <laughs> If you would have told me it's out now, it's number four, let's make it number one. Woo. That's so crazy.